This video is going to answer the burning question, what the heck is an Amazon S3 bucket? You're going to learn not only what a bucket is, but also how you can make one within the Cloudberry Explorer, as well as a few other little tidbits of information regarding your Amazon S3 buckets. So let's get right to it. And here we've opened up our Cloudberry Explorer software. And on this side, we have the S3 account or the remote side. On this side, we have the local side or the computer. That's my desktop, basically, or my computer and the different uh, drives that I have. And here is the path that we're working in right now. We're in the root of both. And again, you can hit the drop down arrow here to determine what you want to show on this particular pane. Right now, I'm in this particular S3 account, as we had named in a prior video. Now then, this is what is called a bucket. And inside of this bucket can be files, folders, cannot be other buckets, but can be other items, like, for example, videos or eBooks or download files. And to, to create a bucket, you have to follow certain rules. So let's go ahead and cover those real quick. Because to create a bucket, first off, you come over here to this blue cube thing here. If you hover over it, it'll say new bucket. Eventually, it'll say new bucket. And then you click on that, and then this pops up. And we, had adjust, we can adjust the default location of the bucket, being U.S. or Europe. As we had mentioned earlier, by coming up here to Tools, Options, and bucket location. This is just the default settings. So if we were to click on that to have our default show up as Europe, and then click on this again. You can see our default is Europe, but you can always change this again as you are creating the bucket name. It's just a convenience factor. But I want this to be US as the default. Okay, now then in creating the bucket names here, you have certain rules you have to abide by. Just like most anything else that's in, in life, you got certain rules you got to abide by. Let's cover those rules real quick. Folder names cannot contain forward slash or backward slash. If so, then they will be automatically removed. The world will not come to a screeching halt. Bucket names can only contain lowercase letters, numbers, periods, and dashes. Not true with folder names. We'll get to that in just a second. Bucket names must start with a letter or number. Bucket names must be between 3 and 255 characters long. However, the suggested length is 3 to 60 some odd characters long. Bucket names cannot be in an IP address style. And if you don't know what that is, well, this is an example of what an IP address looks like. You just can't do this with a bucket name. Bucket names should not contain underscores, but I've seen where they do. It's just that you might encounter some issues down the line, so don't push the envelope. Just don't have it in with, uh, I'm sorry, just do not have it contain underscores. And that brings me to the next one. <laughs> bucket names should not end with a dash. So like the underscore issue, don't end it with a dash. It might work initially, but you might encounter some problems down the line. Don't even worry about it. Just don't do it. Dashes cannot appear next to a period. For example, my-dash-domain.com as well as my dot dash domain.com are both invalid. So don't worry about it. If you attempt to make a bucket name and you forget what one of these rules are, the world again will not come to a halt. You'll just get a little error message. For example, if we try to create a bucket by naming it something that is not globally unique, that's another rule by the way, is that your bucket names have to be one of a kind. If somebody else, one of the other thousands of S3 account holders has already named a bucket the same as what you are attempting to do, like a domain name, these are globally unique. In other words, like a snowflake or a fingerprint. There's only It's one of a kind. So if somebody else has already done this name or you are attempting to create a bucket name that is not abiding by the rules we just covered, then this will happen. No big deal. And if you want to know about the details behind why your bucket did not get created, click on that button there and it'll show you, in this case, yeah, somebody else has already created that bucket name. So one thing you do want to consider also when creating a bucket name is that if you are a domain name holder, in other words, you got some domain names floating around, you got a website or two or 10 or 20, then you should go ahead and first and foremost attempt to create bucket names that equally match or uh, are identical to your domain name. Uh, for example, if you're if you have a domain name called 
peppergardener.com then create a a bucket name peppergardener.com for example I don't know if this is already taken we will find out pepper gardener dot com and nobody has it so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so for all you pepper gardeners out there and I don't even know if I spelled that right then this bucket name will be available for you if you're watching this video in the event that you have this as a domain name then go ahead and create this as a bucket name you may even want to go ahead and put in www.peppergardener.com as your bucket name and this is going to be covered greater in greater depth in the video that we will be having a little bit later on in uh, regarding C names or DNS it's just an additional plus for your S3 account and again that's beyond the scope of this video but we will cover it in an upcoming video so don't sweat it just know that if you've got domain names floating around there go ahead and create some bucket names that match exactly your domain names once you've got your bucket named you have to provide certain permissions to the bucket and or the contents of the bucket for others to be able to have access to it for example if you've got a video on how to grow peppers then you will have those inside of this bucket. If we double click on that, we are now inside of that bucket called peppergardener.com. So you can now create folders if you have various items, just like a typical folder structure of your web hosting account. This will replicate that or can replicate that. You can create additional folders inside of the bucket name. You can create folders inside of folders. Uh, you can create folders inside of folders inside of folders. You can put files inside of those folders. You just cannot create buckets inside of buckets. That being said, let's create a folder named videos. Now these folder names do not fall under the same rules as the bucket names. You can have it start with capitalization, you know, whatever. And inside of here, let's say you've got your videos. Now then, from the get-go, by default, the owner or the creator of this bucket has all the rights, all the permissions, but nobody else does. This is a security f issue. So to provide permissions to somebody else, what you can do is you can either provide permissions for the entire contents of this folder or for the individual files within this folder. And how you do this, it's the same in either case, but since I don't have any files in here, I'm going to show you by allowing permissions to this folder. You simply right-click on it, come on down here to ACL, left-click on ACL settings, and it shows you all the users right now. And you can create additional users by clicking on Add, and the users here would have to be somebody else that has an Amazon S3 account and you can just put in their email address for that account and we'll cover this later on but for the time being by default this one that is the one that is selected the owner has all the rights and if you want to provide those rights to if you want to provide rights to anybody else say for example everybody and your grandmother then you select all users and full control do so at your own risk because you, at this point you are providing the same rights to everybody in the world as you have and you really you don't want that unless of course that's what you want to do but for the most part what usually happens is people will provide only read rights for say videos for example so the videos can be viewed by anybody and everybody now there are even security issues about this too that we'll cover in an upcoming video but this is how you can easily do that now you do not necessarily want to provide any kind of rights to a bucket or to a folder within that bucket what you would want to do for security purposes is only provide rights to the files themselves again we'll cover that a little bit further in depth when we cover the security aspects of your s3 accounts but that's how you can create and provide permissions for the items within the buckets now then once you have those items and the permissions for your users or visitors to your sites and so on you're going to want to be able to have them have access by giving them a URL well right off the bat where the heck how the heck okay well you got to create a URL for this in the same area you just right click on the file in this case I'm using the folder as a demonstration purpose and you come on down here to web URL left click on that and right here is the URL for that particular item in this case the folder you would do the same thing for the files within that folder 
Now then, you can either select it like I just did, then right click, and then left click on copy to put it in your clipboard, or you can just copy to clipboard. Boom. Now it's in your clipboard. You paste it on whatever document or sales page for download links or uh, emails or what have you. And that's how you can create the URLs for your particular files. And that is our video on buckets and creating buckets within your Cloudberry Explorer. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.